the, uh, the quick cliff notes of this lecture would be to uh, eat soy, drink red wine, use a lot of curry on your food, have your green tea, and eat a lot of grapes. These are things that I've been hearing over the course of several years that are very healthy for you, and also recently have shown a lot of interest scientifically uh, in terms of cancer prevention. Now, when you talk about cancer prevention you, and you look at these things and you say, how in the world is that going to help me prevent cancer? And that's the same question I asked. And what I did is I, I looked into the evidence-based medicine of these particular agents and what's being done and I thought that what I would do is share with you initially the concepts of cancer cause in terms of epigenetic factors, discuss how various transcription factors are activated to reduce the incidence of cancer, and then discuss the research efforts going on in each one of these areas. So we know that there's no one in this room that hasn't been touched or will be touched in some way by cancer. It's the second leading cause of death. A half a million people will be diagnosed this year, and, or will die this year, and one and a half million will be newly diagnosed. There's nobody here without a relative, and perhaps even themselves, who have been struck by this terrible disease. So what causes cancer? Well we know that it requires both genetic mutations, and these genetic mutations are often prompted or instigated or caused by epigenetic factors. And these epigenetic factors in, in interact and activate various signaling molecules and transcription factors that lead to genomic changes, mutations. We also know that oxidative damage and impairment of the immune system all contribute to this disease. This is a slide taken from the New England Journal of Medicine this past fall that shows the relationship between aging and cancer. And as you can see, with exogenous factors, UV radiation, the environmental factors and poisons that we ingest every day or are exposed to, as well as our own oxidative stress, may cause breaks in the uh, chromosomes and have genetic effects. And unless these are repaired by the P53 gene and subsequent proteins and by other mechanisms, it leads to misrepl misreplication, mutations, chromosomal abnormalities, or cancer. If the P53 gene is intact and other repair mechanisms, apoptosis occurs, and it leads to cell cycle delay, arrest, and aging. But both of these, the, the key is the DNA repair systems. So what is the science of epigenetics? And those in this room, I'm sure, are familiar with that new concept. And epigenetics refers to those factors that influence genes through various transcription factors to do good or bad. Our genome, as you know, is like a molecular blueprint that sits in the 60 trillion cells of our body and really does nothing until it's acted upon. Well, what acts upon the genome? Nutrition, activity, emotional state, and environmental factors all are the epigenetic factors that have significant input into cancer, as well as heart disease and many other diseases. And the endogenous or intrinsic factors of heredity and the extrinsic factors that I mentioned all contribute to mutational abnormalities, chromosomal breaks, and uh, cancer. My father died at the age of 60 after his third myocardial infarction. And it was my belief in med school, and actually much longer after that, that I was programmed genetically to have 
cardiovascular disease, and most likely, if I'm lucky, make it to 60, because genes control everything, which is the common, the, the common idea. But I discovered that really the intrinsic factors and the inherited factors really constitute about 30% of the diseases that we get and 70% of our lifespan factors are due to epigenetic factors. And so if we're talking about cancer prevention, and we briefly alluded to what causes cancer in terms of mutations and epigenetic factors, what we ideally want to do, of course, is reduce oxidative stress and interfere with genetic mutations as best we can through modulation of epigenetic factors. So epigenetics provides the missing link between the 70% of controllable factors and the 30% that are not. So is cancer preventable? 30% of the time, perhaps it is not. But 70% of the time, by modification of diet, maintenance of optimum body weight, reduce inflammatory processes in our body, it is thought that we can reduce the incidence of cancer. Now, the next two slides were put together by Jeff Bost, my associate, that really form the essence of everything in living longer and healthier or dying sooner and sicker. The nutritional factors, if we look at our Western diet and we look at the incidence of obesity and morbid obesity, 60% of the population, and now childhood diabetes and childhood obesity, if we don't exercise, if we don't take some care and attention to the water we drink, the soil our vegetables and fruits come from, uh, and the air we breathe, and as the previous speaker alluded to in terms of emotional stress, what happens with all four of these epigenetic factors? How does it work to make us sick, to make us unhealthy, to give us heart disease, stroke, and cancer? Well, by interacting and turning on various signaling molecules, which all four of these do, they enter the genome of every cell in our body, and they instigate the turning on of various transcription factors that tell our body to make inflammatory cytokines, chemokines, and metalloproteinases, or to produce anti-inflammatory agents that reduce the incidence of the inflammatory diseases.